Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? This is Russell Hill, the host of WTF, and that's What the Fix Stops You. We have an amazing guest today that we'll get to in just a second, but I would like to introduce. I'm Charity. I'm the co-host here at WTF, and we're very excited today to have Joe Shaker on. Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, Joe Shaker, I'm uh, an owner at Shaker Auto Group uh, up in New England. We're not that big or we're not that small. We do about $300 million in revenue a year and sell about 9,000 cars, and service all those folks uh and i'm also the founder uh of uh, true video uh the video first um application for service yeah i gotta tell you when um uh, we were talking right before we uh started recording this and Terry and i uh do a, a certain level of preparation for these so we don't just hop on and hop on and start you know pinging and pong and so we can't find joe, joe shaker anywhere I mean, we, we can't find them anywhere. And it's by design, actually. Uh, we found some shakers and we, uh, we realized actually who he is. But what he actually does uh, uh, behind the scenes, uh, obviously with a, an automotive group, but true video, uh, most of you, probably all of you are familiar with. And if you're not familiar with Joe Shaker and or true video, you will be because when, when this is a, what the fixed ops, that's what we're talking about, fixed operations. Uh, and so we just, you know, we're real humbled and honored to have you on with us today, Joe. We really are. Yeah. Thank well, I'm excited, you, excited to have some fun talking about what we, what we all love. And so, uh, um, excited. Absolutely. I would like to, so, you know, your roots obviously start, how did you get into dealerships? I'd like to ask that first. Yeah, no. So I became a dealer at 24, um, and uh, my family was in the business. And uh, funny story, I have an uncle who was uh, 65 at the time and my dad uh, were, uh, were partners. And my uncle thought he wasn't gonna live long. His dad had died at 61, his grandfather had died at 62. And, and he was, uh, you know, hey, and I said, you know, I wanna, don't wanna be uh, in the dealership and work for my dad and my uncle. And so I had a cousin there, I had two brothers in school and, I said, you want to do a buyout uh, right now? And um, my uncle said, yeah, uh, I'm not going to live past 65, right? So, uh, and go to Florida. So the funny part of that story is, is we ended up buying into the dealerships and did all these funny things. My uncle lived till he was 94. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably, probably, probably because he, uh, he, 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 probably because he didn't work anymore in the car business or just uh, spend his time enjoying his life. Oh, that's so great. yeah, that's how we started through the business and, um, you know, in, from Connecticut originally into the, into the Boston market. And, uh, yeah, just like every other dealer, uh, I think we lead the league in making mistakes. And, and from those mistakes, we became better every day at, at what we were doing. So. Excellent. So uh, you being the CEO of true video, uh, which is a phenomenal product. I don't know how much, uh, I know a lot of people know about it, but for example, it's not just for fixed operations. It can also be used on the variable side, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. really, if you, if you step back, it's about communication. So the way it started was I saw some video being used and I saw people using video on their phones and I saw mobile devices and all these different things. And um, I just decided to, you always go to the customer. When you want the answers, you just go to the customer. Amen. So what I, I grabbed some repair orders. I started calling customers. And it was really crazy uh, because I got feedback that normally most people would have stopped and said, man, I feel really good about it. It's excellent. And, and my best customers, they were, I bought three cars. We love you folks. Um, they knew the advisors by name, which is always, oh. as you know, it's like, man, that's nice. It, this that's is rare. Now, yeah. now I know that this customer loves us, right? When they yes. know the advisor by name and we've done a good job and I got to give credit to these, these advisors. So the whole conversations went well. And then I, I, I did the Columbo, you know, <laughs> I waited till the end. I thanked them for their time. And I go, Hey, I got one last question. 
did you ever have any doubts? You spent 1500 hours and I just want to know, did you doubt that you needed any of these repairs or did you ever have any doubts in every single one of my best customers? They kind of paused and said, yeah, you're always going to have doubts, right? And I was like, no, that's, it didn't feel right to me. And I said, if my best customers who just gave me this unbelievable review have doubts, what about the rest of customers? Mm -hmm. And and frankly, I I don't like uh, people that say things and don't follow up on them. And I've been in a million meetings where I've heard the marketing punchline, transparency, trust, and transparency and trust, and you need to be transparent. And, And I'm the dealer that raises my hand and goes, yeah, I agree with you. Could you tell me how to execute that? Yeah. And no one ever gives you an answer. So we decided to execute on it and try it out. And before we started, uh, I had a friend of mine who was uh, my hoots, who's now my, my partner at True Video, and he's uh, uh, done a bunch of technology deals. And, and uh, we tested it with 50 dealers. We called up friends in the 20 groups and said, hey, we're doing this. It's working. And we said, we're, even though I'm in automotive and he's a super tech guy, mm-hmm. we're, we don't think we're, our intelligence is we want to test it. And then we ended up, we ended up testing it with uh, 50 dealerships and it amounted to maybe 300 technicians and what's right, what's wrong. And for a year and a half, we did that. And and then I didn't do it. Yeah. That's how you build that stuff. When did that happen? When did you make those calls? When did you start, you know, talking to your friends, et cetera, and and testing out? When, When was that? How long ago was that? That's in 2015 and into 16, okay. you know, so we built it out and, you know, 16 and 17 is where we really tested it. And we already had day jobs. You know, I had the dealerships, my buddy sure. was well off from exits and some tech companies. And we just said, we just want to make this right for the customer. That's our mission. You know, we, we wanted, if you had just netted out, we wanted to connect great businesses with their best customers in a way that they never were able to, to do before. Yeah, that was the is- goal. This, this is exciting. I, um, um, I've been in, uh, uh, I was in, uh, I, I got, I started selling cars in 1985, ended up running stores and then been in the vendor space since 2000 on. And I was part of a couple of companies. This one, my partner and I, we, we found it together and we're only like two and a half years old, but we thought, what, what's the next big thing out there? What is it? Now this was, we rolled out a month before COVID, right? So we had no idea, but we thought, what is the single biggest challenge that variable or fixed has? Anybody has at the dealership. They're all wearing multiple hats. Nobody has any time. Okay. So whatever we needed to do, we needed to do it where somebody didn't have to manage it all day long because as a vendor, if somebody has to do that with turnover, you know, all the stuff, Joe, uh, not that you have at your dealerships, but nationally, it's pretty ugly to turn. No, it is. It so is we sure. wanted to eliminate that. And then the next thing was video over over 80 percent of all consumer consumption today is video based and so we wanted to educate the consumer about these services and recommend and maintenance and things of that nature i they don't i I think sometimes they think everybody's trying to sell me something they don't really realize that recommend and maintenance when you have fifteen thousand maximas a day across the country in different climates coming in for service there's recommended maintenance for a particular reason and uh you know safety concerns etc but it's a hell, it's a lot cheaper or less expensive than major repairs. And so we thought consumers really don't know. Heck, they don't even know the difference between a conventional, a semi-synthetic and a full synthetic oil change, let alone what goes into tires and uh, what, what all that's about, et cetera. And then, uh, it, and, and it, all this is on the dealership's website, because if you go to a dealership's website, you really can't find stuff like that. And I know right. that you separate yourself from that because dealerships are always struggling. I saw it. I was a, a neutralizer when it came to fixed and the variable side, but it's almost like they're, they're not even communicating with each other. They're two separate departments. And right. so you, you found, um, you found something that uh, I thought uh, is, is just an amazing product. So I want you to tell us more about that. Well, let me, let me, um, I always tell people about my journey and whenever I'm speaking at these events and stuff, and and I tell people the journey because when I do, it's everybody can put themselves in my shoes and, and say, wow, this is how you've learned. But one of the things that we got pretty lucky, I'm going to touch on something you just mentioned. We got lucky because we came out with this trying to figure out transparency and trust, but the stars in society kind of aligned. And let me explain. So customer behavior Texting became the most used app, used app on anyone's phone, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Customer behavior, 
10 billion videos are watched a day on Facebook alone. Okay. Like my mom's 80, my mom's 80 something years old. And she says, Hey, you got to check out this video on Facebook. I'm like, you're watching videos on Facebook. I'm like, well, Excuse me, right. What is the world? What is the world coming to? So, <laughs> but so it's hilarious. And that's just faith. So co consumption of information, people don't want to read. People are in a soundbite society. So that ended up happening with customer behavior technologically right? The stars are starting to line up for us. We're getting lucky. Phones take better video than Hollywood cameras did 10 years ago. Right. So, Absolutely. It, and, then, and then you see about streaming, Wi-Fi 6, which you'll see out 5G, all this different stuff. We've been streaming. We used to download things. We stream now. So yep. all of those technologies and customer behaviors lined up and our platform fit in perfect. And so what ends up happening is we start sending out these videos to customers. And my favorite is when I go to places and they talk about personalization and they talk about the customer and I go, excuse me, what do you mean by personalization? Is that, you know, um, uh, Amazon suggesting the underarm, uh, underarm deodorant I use? Cause it's, you know, is that like, <laughs> wow, they know I use that deodorant. I should order it again. Right. That is personalization. But for us, personalization was my name is Joe. I'm the certified technician here at ABC Ford. And I'm showing you your license plate in your car, which they can see. And let me just go over a multi-point inspection to show you the blah, 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 blah. And so it's your car. It's your investment. You're talking to the doctor not the receptionist. That's right. And this is what customers love and they love to learn. We learned that. I didn't know that to start. And I'll tell you one funny thing that, and you're going to laugh at this one because you guys have been in this business. I always say first mover advantage is the person who learns first. And one of the things that happened with us that was pivotal is we saw a crazy amount of shares happening on the videos. Now you think, oh great, this is a texting platform. No, we're an engagement platform. So That's we right. send out the video, we compress it in the link. The link gets compressed again uh, when in, in, fr from the phone and then again up. And then when the customer clicks on the link, they get a beautiful high definition video, can see it and can hear it clearly. But when they're clicking on the link, we're, we're seeing their actions and engagement. It's not like the phone call that says, um, hi, I'm leaving a message. Can you call me back? Like, I know that you've watched it. That's How right. many times you've watched it? I know if you've shared it. So we have all these new data and analytics things that never existed because we used to think about that on websites, you know, oh, time on site, bounce rate, and that's way upper funnel. You're just a prospect. We're in the middle of the conversation now and, right. we, know what you're, and we know what you're doing. So, yeah. wow. But the funny thing that you're going to laugh at is this. We saw so many, 36% um, of the videos were being shared and we're like wow what's up with that so we then go back go down to the dealers go to the customers and figure out what's going on Re technicians were making six re recommendations doing perfect mpis before the technician was cutting them down to four they th were thinking with their wallet not the customers they thought the tech was overselling they didn't understand the repair either way the six went to four before they talked to the customer then they would call the customer and try to verbally tell the customer those four items. The customer would say, thanks, let me get back to you. Mm -hmm. They would try to remember what was told to them from the advisor on those four items and articulate it to a confidant, significant other or somebody. Right. And by the time, right. It was like a crazy phone game as kids. You know, we couldn't get yellow bear correct at the end of a line of 10 people. And here we're talking about tie rod ends and stuff. So it was like Swahili by the time it got to the, to the a decision maker. And we realized that 35% of the customers, there was a co-decision maker there. So the shares, we always, the dealers went wild. And it was funny because we said to the dealers, why has the revenue spiked so high? Revenue was going up 30, 50% per repair order on labor alone. Why is that the case? Is it because the transparency in the video? Is it seeing and understanding? Or is it because we fixed the communication chain by accident, basically, right? How about all the above, right? Yeah. It, it, that's what yeah. they said. As a matter of fact, your, your reaction was exactly what every dealer said to us. It's all of the above. Well, I mean. So it, that was pivotal. Yeah, that that's, pivotal. Um, I want, so I was sitting here thinking that, in the, I was talking to this guy, you, you may not know him because you're not a, a huge on the social, maybe you do, Glenn Lundy, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but I was at NIDAs listening to him and he was talking about technology and how it's evolved from 1922 to 2022 in the last 100 years. 
And he said, Russell, in the next five years, technology is going to advance that same hundred years. Uh, so, and, it, and some of it's going to be really great stuff. You know, technology is used to accelerate momentum, not necessarily create momentum, et cetera. And, he, and I think that's probably true. And you're, you're on the cutting edge. When you say the stars align, uh, I, I don't even know, you know, people have different beliefs and, I, you know, love them for that. I, I don't know if I really believe in coincidence, chance or luck. I believe you reap what you sow based upon right. uh, your character and integrity and what you do. And if you're a servant leader or a, a greedy leader, you know, et cetera, all the different things. So you, you hit on something that um, it, it's taken all the guesswork uh, out of consumers, but it's still all about relationships. It's still all about uh, like you mentioned, knowing the advisor's names. I, I mean, I, I know mine. I don't think most people do uh, for the turnover. But to have something right out of the shop where I have a, a problem or there's something wrong with the undercarriage or brakes or, uh, you know, out of alignment real bad, wear and tear tires, whatever it is, and you send me a video, that, that takes all the guesswork out of it. Oh, it's crazy. You know, what we yeah. started to do too. Is so we start getting all these great responses and what we instilled was uh, into the texting was sentiment analysis, right? So now we've gone from just this idea of sending a customer a clear, transparent video into sharing and analytics and engagement, what they're doing with the videos. And you're like, you're saying, wow, what you guys are evolving. We're consummate learners. And so we start seeing all these texts and we go, we're going to employ sentiment analysis. So the words turn green if it's positive, red if it's negative. And it comes up it. on the dash, it comes up on the dashboard because I've always had a problem with OEM surveys and stuff. They come out four <laughs> days later. Like I need to know the customer is upset real time. Yeah. I want to address the problem real time. Great dealers do a great job, but they just need better information. I also got very frustrated as a dealer. And I wanted to solve this problem when people tell me about data and analytics. And I go, okay, great. Again, my hand goes up again. What do you mean by that? And is it actionable? Like how can my service director, service manager, GM, myself, how can we look at these things and say, okay, um, now I get it. I could see utilization. I could see shares. I could see the length of video. So when you're doing video, the first thing is, is to get utilization up with technicians. And they get used to it. They start seeing customers saying yes all the time. The second thing is the 2.0 version as you're, as a dealer learns is length and quality. What's the best length? What's the best quality? And then dealers start getting that correct, right? And they start, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you start looking at sentiment analysis, how people feel. So we built out a dashboard for our dealers that have these key metrics and they're, they're sound bites, basically six tiles and you just click on it if it's a share or if it's sentiment analysis. And I have dealers, they sit there at my own stores. Uh, I was following at our CDJR store, uh, just the words and phrases people were saying. And I noticed no one picked up the phone. I tried to call, no one picked them. And, I, and it was like very quickly, I saw it within two days of me, you know, just going through it. And, and I don't have time. I mean, between True Video and all these dealerships, I, so at the end of the, I'm reading and I call up and I go, what's the deal? And they go, we're short. An advisor. Well, I go, well, get the person who does warranty to start doing their warranty work at the desk and start picking up the phone because not answering the phone is, 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 is a career decision. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it is. So, but I would not have known that real time nope. or parking concerns if there's construction or what are customers saying? The, I think the term would be verbatims. And so yeah. these are the things that we've been able to do and the phrase is called conversational commerce. You know, this is what they've said in the tech world. You know, what are the, can we respond to customers in real time? Can we get their sentiment? You know, uh, and we have some stuff technology that's coming out that builds on that for the dealerships to give them more insights. And yeah, that's noticed, kind of the big picture. Yeah, I noticed uh, one of the things I thought was real fascinating too. It's a, it's a great tool for advisors to understand and uh, increase their, their, their knowledge uh, with what the technicians find with the videos. Oh yeah. It's, it's yeah. so, it's so, it's so funny. It's like an internal slack, you know, because now if the advisor slack. watches the video, right. If the yeah. advisor watches the video, then what happens is, is they're brought up to speed like that. They don't need the tech to walk up front, stand and stare at them until they get off the phone then explain what happens. They get to see everything. We have dealers that we, we offer direct send from the tech to the, um, uh, to, the, uh, to the customer. 
and then the advisors respond to the customer engagement. And we have, uh, you can adjust it where it goes from the tech to the advisor, and then the advisor can see it, and then it's sent to the customer. Now, as you make that thought process and, and go, listen, what, how would you do it? Let right. me give you a couple. Let me give you a couple of stats we've done. Uh, we we would we uh, on our website. You could pull our ROV report, return on video investment. You can pull that from last summer, our 2021 report. Customers respond to videos in two minutes in 31 seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you send a video from the tech to the advisor, um, 10 minutes 41 seconds is the average time that it sits there before it's sent off to the customer. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So as a dealer, we have dealerships that go, look, I do you know, 70 customer pay repair orders a day, 70 times 11 is 770 minutes. We actually sell time here, that's yeah. not acceptable. We're gonna go direct to customer. And then here's how you're gonna respond on the advisor side. But at least the dealers have a choice. Yeah, to, absolutely. You know, to, to see that. So those are the real things that you're able to see. And in communication, you're able to see the video was created. The video was sent to the advisor. The video sent the customer. The video was viewed. And there's a little popcorn trail that we never had before. We were mm -hmm. so concerned in service over the years. Hey, can we get the information of parts so they could have the parts ready to go and we could right. save four minutes? Four minutes. Yeah. All the time being wasted is being is communicating with the customer. It has nothing to do with the four minutes on the parts desk. Yeah, you know? no. It, it, it so what's really interesting that uh, I'm I'm sure both of us, all of us agree. Uh, there's a huge defection rate, and these aren't my numbers, but NADA says that for every franchise dealer, there's 16 non-franchise entities out there, and and dealerships uh, now, particularly on the fixed off side. Are, are starting to take that back from, from the paid side, from the organic side, but it still all has to do with leadership. What does it take to stop uh, the defection rate at 36 to 39 months? And it's this kind of stuff right here, because if somebody's coming in, which the vast majority of people roll in every day are there for oil change and say, rotate and balance. If you don't build a relationship with them at the end of, at the end of that 36, 39, 40, whatever it is, they're just going to take their business elsewhere. And one of the first things they're probably going to do is buy a set of tires. What do you do regarding tires? Well, yeah. Well, I, I let me give you two comments on that because <laughs> we don't. First of all, I'll tell you a couple of things that have changed in the business and from a fixed ops perspective. Okay. So for years, thirty-five. When did we? When did MPIs come out? Thirty-five years ago. And uh, eighty. Uh, 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 it's it's it's, it's yeah. a long time, right? Yeah. So yeah. what we did was we decided to come out with multi-point inspections because 70% of customers were defecting after the warranty expired, right? And we needed to build trust, gain back right. the customer. That's 35 right. years later, 40 years later, 70% of customers are still defecting after the warranty expires, okay? So I'm just going to debunk something that an OEM will talk to me about. And when I'm done telling them this, they'll go, oh my God, I'm so sorry I thought like that. That's a standard go-to move. MPIs, you have, you have OEMs that pay dealerships margin money based on doing an MPI on a car. Like That's right. if you need to do that, you need to leave the car business if you don't <laughs> believe that. Now, here's the difference. An MPI today is an internal document to, you know, mark down exactly all the things a vehicle needs. We had a dealer tell us this line. I'm going to tell it to you and you're going to laugh. He said, you know, for years, customers have been coming in asking for us to play him a song. And we decided to hand them the sheet music. Why don't we just play him the song? So <laughs> MPIs have been a huge, huge failure. They were good at pr providing a cadence of filling out what the car needs, but it's really turned into this huge internal document. Yeah. The, the second one that we make fun of all the time when we, when we speak with OEMs and I always knock them on, you know, and, and uh, knock them around and they love it. Too. Oh, I bet you do fun. too. No, we have fun because being a car dealer, I love uh, the OEMs. I have great partnerships with my OEMs and, and I love them. And we just joke around all the time. And one of them is uh, they, every time I get asked the question, how do you follow up on declined repairs? What do you guys do for follow-up? How can we follow up on a declined repair? And I go, well, can I ask you a question? Can we solve the problem for declined repairs? <laughs> How about we find out what, why is declined repairs happening? Yeah. And so what we do is we say 50% of them are probably caused because I don't believe it. 
That's right. I don't see, I don't understand. That's right. That's right. So why don't, why don't we send videos and we'll solve 50%? Because then I, when someone sees their filter, you know, has acorns in it and stuff, they're going to get a filter. I, it's immediately. A immediately. Right? <laughs> yeah. When you call them up and go, I'm going to suggest a filter, they're going to go, I'm going to suggest no. Yeah, I'm going to pass this time or whatever. Yeah. Right. So yeah. why don't we solve the client repairs instead of figuring out how to continuously mess up and just try to market to the, the hell out of them, right? The second thing, what's another reason some of the clients are pairs? I can't afford it, right? right? So if you can implement a buy now, a buy now, pay later strategy, like which we do very do. well. Yeah. Right. And we send yeah. those over links and those right. links, they just click on, they do it right on their phone. That's you right. don't have to walk out in front of them and in the service department with everybody watching. It goes right to their mobile device. And we work with those two firms right there um, that you just mentioned. And so if you solve affordability and believability it's over yeah how much how much is left 15 percent, and it's you, generally a convenience problem i don't have it is. time i can't get there and then if you factor in the relationship i mean you know when you got these a, a mom come in with a minivan or suv or, or anything like that you got bad tires bad brakes etc you get a lot of decline uh, services for that kind of stuff you're, you're not relating to the customer you're talking about their safety you're talking about their roadworthiness. you're talking about their kids you're talking about I mean, all the things that we should be talking to them about, we're not talking to them. You are. And what you do is like, it's like phenomenal. It's like the future if you want to turn things around. If not, you're going to get less left in the dust, particularly when the EV thing, you know, although that's quite a long way away. It's a totally different topic. But what are the challenges you run into implementing this into the dealership? Yeah, so what happens is it, 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 when we first started, it was like people like what what are we going to do and, and technicians immediately were how much are you going to pay me to do that and so what happens is generally at most dealerships is one third of the techs pick it up immediately mm -hmm. the second third um and this is gonna this is another funny thing that makes sense when i'm done telling you it's um the second third pick it up in about 10 to 14 days <laughs> and the third and the holdouts which are generally the master tech, super experience, maybe been there a while or older, they finally pick it up because they see everybody walking back to their bays full of parts and maintenance items and stuff like that. But the best at using it ultimately are the last group that took forever to get on. It's kind of like the mad customer that you overcome and you help them out and you kind of mm -hmm. proved yourself to them and they become mm -hmm. your best customer in the world. Absolutely. The problem customer. Right. The tech, it's the same sort of, uh, I'm trying to give you the same sort of uh, sure. similarity because the technician that gave you the biggest problem doing it and doing all, and when they finally got on it, they become the They're greatest hooked. user. They're oh, the greatest yeah. user. Yeah. It's like it, the, the people at that level that resist change the most probably realize when they start in, adapting to it, it's right where they needed to change. It's completely changed their whole outlook on everything they're doing. Right. And the, the, the real key is to say to the technician, you know, uh, you know, what's in it for you? You've been doing these yeah. great NPIs and the message hasn't reached the customer. Sure. You know, uh, we go to the advisors and say it's very hard to articulate or try to get hold of the customer. So when we implement it, we point out all the flaws in the communications mm -hmm. and we say this is what's hurting your ability to make more money and serve the customer well. This is hurting the ability to serve the customer well and make more money. And when we show everybody how it helps them selfishly, mm -hmm. it, it gets adopted. And I think the main thing that I'll say to you, which is an umbrella statement that I'm going to make is we're really not trying to change the way we do business. We're just trying to change the way we communicate, right? That's really, because we have great technicians doing great inspections, doing great quality work, uh, getting people in and out quickly, but, but the, the communication, communication is broke. And yeah, that's is. right. And, and when you, and by the way, where's all the mistakes too? When you look at, oh, how did that fail? Oh, we, uh, we didn't call the customer in time. We didn't do this. 95% of customer experience and, and revenue. This is another thing that I learned. 95% of customer experience and revenue is embedded in how well or how poorly you communicate. Communicate. Okay, I, I want to so, That's a key. Go ahead, Charity. I interrupted. Yeah, can I ask you a question, Joe? I'm curious about the videos. Are they educational tool? Are they a sales tool? Are technicians actually filming like the acorns in the in the car yeah. or you know what is your process of making those or is it stock footage how, how do you do it 
Oh, no, no, it's completely personal. So, so you know, I'll, I'll look at your question. order. I'll have your car. Up, I'll have your car up on the lift. Right. Oh. When I talked about personalization earlier and I'll say, hello, Charity, my name is Joe. I'm the certified technician here at ABC Ford. We have your vehicle in today and I wanted to give you a visual inspection of your vehicle and the multi-point inspection. As you can see, I have it up on the lift. And what we do is we like to show the license plate. <laughs> we want the customer to know that this isn't another car, it's their car. Uh -huh. And then we'll walk our way over and we'll say, we measured your tires. As you can see, this is a tire gauge and your tires right here. And this is how the measurement works and you're green and you're really good. Let's walk over here to the other part. This is another thing we check. As you can see on your brakes, this is a, a you know, a brake gauge and we'll check the how thick or thin or whatever your pads are. Let me show you this. And so what these are yellow right now. They're in good shape, but we're going to monitor these. We're going to have to over the next couple of yeah. times to make sure that we're doing that. And so we'll do all the right things, but we'll do it verbally. So people forget about video is that you get millions of pictures. We already know that. But what they forget about video and often don't think of is the narrative. Mm -hmm. You're getting it's like pictures with paragraphs. No, we have millions of pictures with someone talking to you, reading nice. you the story. And so we'll go through that and we'll say, I'm gonna put pause on right now just to lower the vehicle. And I'm gonna open up the hood and show you what we found under your hood. And then we'll lower the vehicle, we'll open the hood, we'll stop pause and say, okay, I just wanna show you this. You can see your fluids. We filled up your washer fluid. You don't need to stop at the gas station ever because you're a customer of ours in the winter. Um, and you can see we topped off all your fluids. They're all in check. I did take out the cabin air filters and your filters look really good. Uh, you don't need to change any of these at this time. And as you can see, we did a battery test and that battery test shows that right here's the printout and your battery is really good and solid. You don't need to worry about the winter and uh, those cold temperatures. So what, we'll do what, what you would normally inspect, but we'll walk customers through it. And the next question is gonna be, that's great. What happens if I don't need anything? Should I be doing a video? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, of course you should. It's the yeah. same as why you should do a multi-point inspection every time. And yeah. I think that customers, yeah, let me just make this one point because yeah. you're going to laugh at this one as well, is I don't allow people to say oil change in my, my dealerships. That's, that, we don't do an oil change. That's debasing what we do. And when people go, what's your oil change versus the price of the oil change? We don't do that. I'm, I fill up your washer fluid. You don't need to grab a gallon of blue stuff on the side of the road if you're a customer of ours and we fill it up. That's you right. see this battery tester, it, it cost us $3,000, this expensive battery tester that we're using to make sure that you're gonna be safe, your car is gonna start. So we do so many good things that we don't talk about that it's no mystery that customers believe yeah. that a oil change versus another oil change is the same thing. It, it, it's not. You're absolutely right. And I got to tell you, Charity, do you agree or disagree? If if I got that kind of report, I want to know the stuff that is good. If everything is bad or is, uh, you know, needs to be repaired, I'm a, I'm a little hesitant about what they're talking about. But that's not what you just went through with this, Joe. You went through what what's good, uh, what's marginal, what, what what is going on now. And they see and they hear the narrative, et cetera. I'm a customer for life. Are you a customer for life charity for that kind of person? Yeah, I think yeah. it really helps to unveil the secrecy that's going yeah. on in the back of the dealership. They have your car and they have all the answers, but are those answers truthful? And are yeah. they are they giving you, or are they just trying to upsell you, trying yeah. to get more money from you? So I think it's really yeah. beneficial. It makes it, a lot of sense. It is. It's almost like um, they don't ever walk me back to the service department and show me that stuff. No. But they send me a video <laughs> and you know, the license plate. There's a lot of little subtle things that go on there psychologically that is a powerhouse on how that's delivered and received by the, the customer. I, I, I think it's great. That stops the bleeding right there, doesn't it? Oh, it's listen, it's uh it's it's incredible. Now listen, we're also playing into the hands of uh -oh. everything that I told you about yeah. with customers loving video, customers loving personalization. Yep. Personalization will be one of the key hubs of customer experience in the future. We also fixed a lot of problems, obviously, because you know the the communication chain, there's a lot of bad advisors and there's a lot of great advisors. There's a lot of but, but you know, bad technicians can't oversell right now. You have to show me what I'm missing. Yep. Right. To say I need breaks and I don't need breaks because you're some rogue thief, you know, that it's working at a dealership that can't happen anymore no. to not be able to reach the customer or say you didn't do this. That doesn't happen anymore. So inadvertently, 
And, and listen, I'm humbly admitting in solving this problem, we learned how to fix so many other issues that plagued dealerships from either a bad technician or an advisor who's, you know, you know, not paying attention. Absolutely. It, it, it's like it, it, it fixed the communication chain. I, I had one advisor that I noticed when the videos were sent to the advisor that it was taking him 23, 24 minutes to move him off to the next customer. I was able to go to that advisor and say, hey, listen, what's going on? Identify <laughs> the problem, have evidence. If it, Let's say the advisor was terrible and they just didn't right. care. We were able to say, look, here's evidence that you don't care about your job and we're going to let right. you go. That's and right. and here, here's the evidence that, that you don't care. It's not my opinion. So there's so many f- benefits that came from this that, um, that I, I can't even explain because we started to fix communication. No, I, I think with, with our audience, uh, they're extremely intelligent. I think you'll find that uh, what, what you do, if they didn't know, they, they darn sure know now. This is part of the future. This is the same mantra that we preach as well. I'm going to do a quick pattern interrupt just to, uh, are you married and do you have kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been married. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just, no, I, we're not like to do a little bit. Yeah. Well, like I, a little pattern interrupt. I tried to figure out what that meant. We don't use that expression in Northeast <laughs> pattern interrupt. What happened? And I, yeah, I have a, uh, I, I've been married uh, 26 years and I have oh. uh, three children. So. And uh, boy, girl, how old? My son, 23, um, and daughters, 19 and 18. Wow. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, so, I'll take over. I'll yeah, take go over. ahead. So um, kind of going off of True Video and your dealership, uh, what sort of lessons have you learned in the, in the business of business ownership over the years? Well, it's, it's really all about people. You know, um, recently I was very humbled to, to be nominated as uh, Time Dealer of the Year this past year. Wow, congratulations, and, uh, Joe. Yeah, yeah no, it's, and, you know, I try to be undercover and someone must have, you know, as we'd say it back east, ratted me out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, as I wrote the time dealer thing, I really wrote a lot about our, our employees and our team members. And um, the most enjoyable thing for me in any business is bringing on team members and watching them start and grow. And the car business has just been fabulous for that. The car business is a natural for diversity and inclusion because people Indeed. are just hey, I don't they're like I'm here for an opportunity yeah. and they're like yeah well they don't have a school for this and we'd love to bring you on and and so you know uh it's been that's one of the most enjoyable things for me and what I've learned about the car business is is uh is bringing on the people as far as running a business for me I have a process environment so the the phrase we say is you know c- let's commit to the process and then we surrender to the result yeah. So we're right. not thinking about getting at the end game, end game. It's never about the end game. It's about doing all the right steps and whatever shows up, we're going to be great with it. So right. successful so, people do daily what average people do occasionally. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of our, our mantra. The other mantra we have in the business is theory without execution is hallucination. And I yeah. tell everybody, I don't, I don't like to hallucinate. So right. if we're right. going to do something or sign up with a vendor or do everything, we make sure we have full commitment, buy-in, and then we hold people accountable to that buy-in that they gave, whether it's bringing on a vendor or whether it's trying out something, a different business practice. So we, we, we really have these basic tenants. And I think we're incredibly solid at our business uh, based on the fact that I've made every mistake. Like I said, well, we've, sure. I, I've grown before and had too many stores and go, oh my God, I thought I could after the, I could do everything like I did the first and one and only store. And you're like, oh man, I am an idiot. And so you've really learned over time and uh, it's, it's absolutely. Been excellent. Yeah. I know that when people to, to know something and not to do it is to not really know it. Uh, people get right. really confused with that kind of, and it is all about the people. You know what? Uh, we've heard so many different answers of variation. All of it comes back to people. Very sure. few start out with what you just did. It's people. Uh, in my company, the team we have is the best team. And I have an acronym for that. It's together, everybody achieves more. Uh, it, it's all about empowering your people and watch it and just watching them grow. It, it, I mean, in the communication that we, it is all about the people. I think it was Lee Iacocca back in the 80s said, gentlemen, in the end, 
you can sum all businesses up to three things, and that's people, products, and profits, the most important of which you're people, because without that, you have nothing. And it's yeah. like, and, and, and you're the kind that you get buy-in, everybody talks about it and stuff like that, because you can't hold them accountable. And I've known plenty of leaders out there that aren't really leaders, but they force things down people's throat. It's always better if it's their own idea. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I'm not, I don't try to um, do the Jedi mind trick on people either. Like, I, I, I'll, you know what I mean? You're going to love my idea. No, it's, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> it's really not. It's, um, that's, that's how old I am, a big Star Wars reference there. But uh, the, uh, the, 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 for me, it's really about everybody believing, you know, and, and I don't, I, I, look, I've read all the books and mission and what's your mission and all this. There, there's reality to all of that. It's there just it about making it simple. People will talk about it and they'll be theoretical and love people listening to them. I'm about really doing it. And so there's always a mission. And sometimes people aren't on the same mission. Like I've had employees that I've said, look, we just don't believe the same thing. And for those reasons, we not, we're not all going to work together. Everybody's yeah. not going to be good together. Everybody's my way is not the right way, but this is our system. This is our process. And, you know, I'm a New England person. So obviously I'm going to use the New England Patriot reference, but, you know, we have the Patriot way and we call That's it the, the way. way. And, yeah. and this is what you do. I mean, New England's pretty good at short, white, uh, short, uh, wide receivers. I mean, yeah. so when you get all these little short guys running around catching balls for our team over the years and years and years and, and so you see these like who would not make it in other systems and you see people that work for the team and, you, you know, so at the end of the day, it's um, I think it's it's really a systems approach and really caring about your people. It and is. I love the fact that uh, we provide opportunities to everybody from every walk of life. And when they go and get their first home or have their first children or when they do these these monumental life steps, I get a huge charge out of that. Yeah. And so that's that, that's. That's the answer to that's what it's all about right there. That's the uh -huh. answer to your question right there. And, oh, and as far as it, when you talk about the other things, like we also like to track things, you know, people always say inspect what you expect. If you can't measure it, you can't, you know, all these things. And it's true. Um, for me, when we started doing the, when we started doing the video thing, we did a, we got a 1.1 million repair order sample from one of our OEM partners. And in that repair order sample, um, the ROs increased, if you had a video, it was a $55 larger repair order than if you didn't have a video. And this was the OEM comparing all their dealers. Mm -hmm. And um, if and not only did you get $55 more repair order, but it was four points higher on net promoter score for intent to return and three points higher on net promoter score on value for service. So at, talking about measuring and the process and all that stuff, um, you know, that's, you know, you really need to then go and say, what happened? Oh yeah. Was it good? Was it successful? And that was one of the best, we, we saw the data from multiple areas, but to get an OEM to call us and say, we'd like to share the data with you was, was huge. Cause it so, showed the power of video there. In, in, oh, video. In I mean, sense. Uh, we're, so we're, we're, yeah, we are both hand raisers when it comes to that. And I, I actually believe, uh, every dealership uh, needs what we do because there's not really anybody for the most part in the space doing exactly what we're doing. I also believe the same thing about true video, but that doesn't mean uh, that uh, that quite happens that way. So how do you get this message out? Cause we do a lot of we, the stores we do business in a lot of them have your product and a lot of them don't. Uh, yeah. So how, so I know that you're, you're, um, people really can't find you. They're obviously going to be able to find your company, uh, but this is going to get a, a, a lot of exposure. And I also will be talking about, there's an, another company with a, a CEO that we had on not too long ago uh, about another product that I personally, no, I don't think this way about all of them, but there are some, some of them that are going to be detrimental to the change in the next three to five years that they better adapt and incorporate or they're going to be left in the dust. And I'm, do you believe that as well? Yeah. So I, I was speaking at, at uh, Reuters, um, I don't know, three, four weeks ago in right. at the Reuters conference. And I, I said that, you know, right now, if you don't want to be state of the art and better and think about the customer, 
you really have to question yourself. Like if it, OEMs and dealers need to be closer than they've ever been. That's if right. we can just sit, think back, Rivian, as a matter, they went public at $77 billion. And the same day that Rivian went public, Ford was worth around $77 billion. So here's a company that's probably never sold a truck. And if they did, they rolled it down the hill because they weren't ready at the time. <laughs> And, and they had the same value. And then for some crazy reason, stocks went crazy and it went up. And I think at one point it had the almost the same value as Ford and GM collectively, which I find to be crazy. But what that tells me, forgetting about my opinions on market capitalizations and all these crazy things, what it tells me is we're, we're facing an existential threat and you either want to embrace the dealer franchise system or not. And you can't say, well, it's not fair. We don't do this for dealers. Well, you know who doesn't do video? Tesla doesn't do video. Rivian doesn't do video. None of these folks. None of them have the locations all over the country. None of them have these state-of-the-art branded facilities all across the country. Will dealerships cut back? Will some go away smaller? Is it? Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Yeah, we're going um, we're we're to figure it out. Uh, I, yeah, I we're going to figure I, it out. I, I love your message. I, I remember... Uh, the sky was falling and it's it's fallen. You've been a part of it and seen it many times. It's like 1996 when websites first came on the scene, right? We all had the ultra fast dial up modems, right? With AOL. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then the, this company, this company found this called Auto Bytel with these things called internet leads, okay? And they were like gold, literally nine out of 10 people that would submit a lead would drive whatever region that we had would drive up and it was a deal. But I mean, uh, everybody was freaking out. Oh my God, websites, nobody's going to come to the store anymore. Everybody's going to be buying cars online. It's, it's all over with. This is not any different. Uh, right. you, you adapt and overcome and people in automotive are the best at adapting yeah. and overcoming. Well, the funny yeah. thing too, is when you step back, it's uh, if I'm an OEM, I look at the, uh, the, my distribution system and I go, I already have some of the best locations all over the United States on the best roads. And I already have some of the best facilities in place. And all of those facilities, everybody forgets, have millions of dollars of working capital in it that's not the automaker's money. So I didn't have to buy buildings. I didn't have to buy, I didn't have to capitalize these places. And if I end up making great electric vehicles, they're, I'm going to scale faster than anybody because I've got yeah. the footprint down. So yeah. th these are these are inherently what's going to happen. And, and you know what? I'll tell you another fixed stop thing that someone mentioned to me the other day, speaking of EVs. If someone said to me, Joe, EVs don't service as much. What do you think about the fixed stops and service? And I said, well, I don't think 70% of customers defect after the warranty expires anymore. I think more customers stick because of the facilities, the locations, the technology, the customer experience, and because it's a little different of a fix. It is. You know, when we're, and, and, and I think customers want that vehicle looked over differently by professionals. I think it, if we can um, maintain 50% of customers, yeah. um, then that's going to make up for the gaps in well, uh, it, maintenance it, cadence. It will. Uh, and I, I think that I would like to have, or we'd like to have Jan back sometime to talk to you specifically about that. That is a session in itself. Oh, I'm no question. To love and engage in ping pong. I know we're, um, we're getting close here. We're I wanted close. to. Should yeah. we go through the quick fire questions? Yeah, we have a few quick fire questions. Feel free to answer them or not. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. these are these are more on the fun side. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and they're they're called quick fire because they're really fast and um, should be easy to answer. We'll see. Hold so, on, Joe's going, what the hell? Have I got myself into yeah. here. <laughs> no. What's your it. biggest failure, and what did you learn from that experience? Um, my biggest failure uh, was probably. Um, uh, man, you know what? I don't actually have a failure. I mean, every time I've made a mistake, um, I've it's created such a large bounce for me. Mm -hmm. I'd say some of the failures I had were thinking I could just buy dealerships and run them all the same. But what, by doing so, I realized the system and processes we have today. And I could add three stores tomorrow and every all our French fries would taste the same. So yeah, that would be the mistake. But I've never looked, I've never, I can't even entertain the word failure. Good it's it's a it's a learning yeah. experience. I like yeah. that, right? Um, if you had to write a book tomorrow, what would it be about? Um, it would be about the truth. Um, it, it it would be 
how do you decipher the truth uh, with all the nonsense? I, I, I find uh, the narrative and the perception and the way people, whether it's uh, in sales and business, when people speak and uh, they don't have a resume behind it or it's politics, I, I just would actually like to know the truth. So uh, how to find and uh, rely on the truth is probably, I'd write something about that because it's something I crave for today. I just wish people would just be truthful and um, instead of trying to, you know, um, not they don't sugarcoat things. They just deliver them at angles where things can that, be uh, seen in agenda. multiple directions. Absolutely. It gets tiresome. Mixed it's agendas tiresome. for sure. Absolutely. I would yeah. read that book. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. If you had to give your 18 year old self a piece of advice, what would you say to your old, your younger self? Um, I caddied as a kid and I had this guy, I tried to sell him a car. And I tried to wash, I wash his car after I caddied actually. And he thought I would be successful someday. And, uh, I would tell myself, uh, you know, keep doing, uh, he told me this thing. He goes, Hey, when you're big time, just remember, how do you expect to go anywhere? If you can't remember where you came from. And I never wow. forgot that. And so what I told, what I would do is I'd say, you know, lean in, uh, not only to this, like you have your whole life, but lean into other things and try to be around more people that can share this type of advice with you, because you can really fill your cup of experience more by being around great people that, that Absolutely. can share theirs. So that, that I would try to learn as much as I wow. can, just like I did at that point. That's well, true. You well, are the average yeah. of the people that you hang out with. That's right. No, absolutely. Perfect. Uh, I, I remember a, a mentor of mine uh, when I was finally ready, this is uh, uh, quite a few years ago, but he said, Russell, are you willing to do the things that other people aren't willing to do so that you can have and become the things that most people will never have and never become? What are you willing to do? And he kind of, in reference to 95% uh, of the population is getting their information from the name, same 95% of the population that has the same thing you have or less than what you have, how are you going to get any more? And so I start tapped in, tapping into people like what you're talking about that I used to think were unapproachable. Quite the opposite, I found, don't you? No, it's you're 100% right. And I encourage people today. I have often have people send, uh, you know, young folks or people investigating and learning. That's great. Um, and I think it's a great way to develop a career too, is I always encourage people, look, don't go for an interview, but ask for an informational interview yep. and use your resources to meet and learn from others. Learning is, if you're a consummate learner, which is what I am, mm -hmm. um, you're going to really just evolve over time yeah. uh, with that with that open mind. And I encourage people to do that. It's so true what you just said. Well said. Uh, well said. I mean, it's like, I, I just, I, I, that's the kind of stuff that really drives me. My son, many, and we'll, we'll end, but my son many, many years ago said, Dad, how do you know if you're making the right decision or not? And I, and I wanted to keep it real simple so we could elaborate. I said, well, yeah. when I make a decision, it usually involves other people around me. And if they win and I win, it's usually the right decision. Now, if I'm making a decision for me at the expense of the people around me, it's usually not a, a, a very, the consequences are, are not really very good. It's pretty much that simple. Involve people around you, lift them up yeah. and uh, help them move on to, if they want. I mean, you can't make them drink. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I agree with you. I also think that's applicable to business. Like, so when I think of you saying that, I think about what we do it with your video and I'm sitting there going, Hey, I want to solve the customer trust. I want to connect great businesses with their best customers. And the way to do that is to do this, 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 and this, but it's really the right idea, the right goal in mind with the right heart in place. And then let stuff just arrive. It comes yeah. to you. You never yeah. chase if you do the right things, then it does, you know, it works itself out. It does. Yeah. And, you know, people like what you just mentioned that you want to do this one. You just did. You just right. actually, uh, if people grasp and, and, and just listen to you, of course, uh, I think charity, what would be the next thing coming up? Well, the next thing, Joe, is we tell you how much we appreciate you coming Indeed. on today. And um, we're very grateful and we hope to have you again. But also, we want to give you a few minutes. Um, I know you can't be found on LinkedIn, but you have the floor. Tell our viewers um, where they can find your company or whatever you'd like. Whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you'd like. Yeah. So it's uh, truevideo.com is where you can find our company. Um, and, you know, you could reach out to us 
uh, at any time. Um, my, uh, my email is joe at truevideo.com. Not too complicated. Um, and uh, we look, we'd love to to hear from you or answer any questions or, or help out. But the reality for me is if, if I was just to talk about business in general, I don't really like to pitch us. I really like to say, let, we need to do a great job in this business and we have the best people in the world. And if we merge the best employees in the world with the best technologies, we can really uh, control our destinies and not just make customers happier, make more money, but also create a stable business uh, that we can rely on for the long term, which is what we're all looking for. So that's my wow. words of advice to people in the car business in general. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody out there, thank you once again for another successful episode of WTF. And I have to remind everybody that's what the fix stops to all of you. And uh, with True Video uh, and most, you know, we're honored and humbled to have uh, Joe Shaker on with us today also as well. And I want to remind you to like and share and uh, you know, ask questions, reach out to him. Uh, I believe, and I'm not just saying this, I really believe that for all those that know me out there, this is something if you don't have, you better uh, look into and get, at least explore it. Spend a few minutes, get outside your comfort zone and take a look at something that might quite revolutionize what you're doing in fixed stops today. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you, Joe. Oh, it's been a pleasure. could not be reached at all had it not been for the texting line I, I listen i had a, a good friend crazy on. i had a good thank you for watching i hope you're enjoying this episode of wtf we come up with new episodes and shorts all the time we launch them on youtube linkedin and all of your favorite podcasting networks and we'd like to ask for your support please head over to our LinkedIn company page, like and follow us there. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. We have a strong lineup of automotive experts coming your way. We don't want you to miss it. Thank you so much.